I've been flying the Mavic Air for three months now, so I have some pretty good experience with the, the Mavic Air. So in this review, we will look at the pros and cons and see what works and what doesn't work for me. And this might help you to decide if you want to purchase the Mavic Air or not. But before we get to that, let's roll that intro. Do you want to improve your video skills, learn about emails, then consider subscribing to my weekly tip testing tutorials. As I mentioned in the intro, I've been flying the Mavic Air for three months now, so I have a pretty extensive experience of uh, what works and what doesn't. So this is going to be my honest review, unbiased uh, with the pros and cons for this machine. If you don't know the Mavic Air, then just let's recap the specs. We basically don't need to do this, but uh, that gives me a chance to show off my new auto dolly. Foldable and portable. Three axis gimbal with a 4K camera. Panoramas up to 32 megapixel. Three directional environment sensing. Front, rear, bottom camera and sensors. 18 minutes of real flight time. All right, so let's start by listing the things that I like about the Mavic Air. I like the way that they mount fillers on the Mavic Air. I like the screw solution where the fillers are actually threaded onto the lens. That makes the solution much more secure and safe to use. It's built like a tank. It's a really solid construction. And even though I actually managed to crash it a few times, nothing has happened to the machine. And especially the gimbal construction is really good, especially compared to the Mavic Pro. I like the fly more combo. I think that is a pretty uh, neat uh, starter kit where you get more or less everything that you need. You might be able to pick up uh, additional filters, uh, but apart from that, it's a pretty good uh, startup uh, solution. The battery in the remote seems uh, pretty strong. It can easily outlast three batteries. Uh, so this is uh, really, really satisfying that you don't run out of juice on uh, your remote. Flight time can always be discussed and we often want more than uh, what we get, but uh, with an average of 18 minutes, uh, this is uh, quite sufficient for me. I'm really impressed with the camera quality. This little drone produces some amazing pictures despite it has a small sensor. And it goes without saying that the form factor is brilliant. It's nice and compact and it fits easily in your backpack. Having obstacle avoidance uh, in the back of the drone, that is simply brilliant and it's very, very needed, especially if you do these pull away shots and uh, where you're concentrated on looking on the screen and you don't uh, see obstacles uh, behind the drone. I really like the compact design of the remote. I think it's uh, pretty smart that you could take off the joysticks and uh, tuck them away inside the remote. The gimbal cover, that's also a huge improvement. That's pretty easy to mount and it will even let you have uh, external ND fillers on uh, while uh, you store the device. Also, I like the built-in 8GB storage. Um, I don't use it very often, but I had a few times where I actually ran out of uh, space on my SD card and that was pretty handy to have some additional storage inside the drone. By the way, if you're new here, then uh, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on my weekly tips, tests and tutorials. But how is it in real life? Let's look at uh, what I don't like about the Mavic Air. This is likely the part of this review that you have been waiting for because this will influence your buying decision if you want it or not. Remember to unfold uh, the landing gear slash antennas. To be perfectly honest, sometimes I actually forget this part. And uh, the problem with that is that the camera actually touches the ground when the gimbal initializes. So this is uh, not good. That's been said and written a lot about the connection that uh, the Mavic Air was released with Wi-Fi instead of OcuSync. And uh, I have to admit that the, the connection is not as stable as we are used to. Uh, it uh, takes a, a bit of getting used to that you sometimes lose the signal to the drone. And uh, it's very sensitive to uh, the direction of the antenna that it's pointed in the, the right direction. So it, it can be handled and it has not failed me yet but it is scary when you start to lose connection to your drone. Despite the Mavic Air actually handles high wind uh, pretty well, I've seen uh, under these conditions that the, the gimbal can be knocked out of uh, leveling. And I really miss my exposure compensation wheel on the right side of the remote. I've lately experienced uh, a few bugs in the DJI GO 4 interface uh, where, uh, for example, the histogram is uh, enabled under the gear settings but not shown on the front page then you have to go in and disable it and enable it again. 
Even though I've been doing it many, many times, I still mess up the folding of the drone every time that I do it. It's not natural to me. It's a minor thing, but <laughs> it's still kind of amazing that yeah, I can't get it right. The Mavic Air has a much higher top speed than the Mavic Pro, but for some reason, uh, when you accelerate from zero, it feels much slower. Noise can be a problem. I don't know if it's the high-pitched sound or what it is that they take people off. I had people approach me saying uh, that this is a really noisy drone, which uh, I haven't uh, really experienced before with some of the other DJI products that I've been flying. The charger, that is uh, pretty smart, but it only charges one battery at a time, and that could be a problem if uh, you're in a hurry and uh, you need a full set of batteries. I would say Mavic Air is uh, pretty sensitive to magnetic interference. Um, I have been asking all the time to uh, calibrate my compass. But you need to be careful here, because if this is being caused by being too near to metal uh, objects, this is a wrong uh, information. So uh, try to move away from uh, the spot where you started the aircraft and reboot it and see if the error message disappears. You don't want to calibrate your compass based on this interference, because that would make it all wrong when you're airborne. The position of the SD card slot is pretty annoying and it's kind of fiddly to get it in and out. There's no doubt that the Mavic Air is a dimmed down version of uh, the Pro because there's uh, taken a little bit of everything away from it. It has less flight modes, less uh, color profiles and etc. A good example is Waypoints. They left that part out, but that can luckily be compensated by using third-party software from Litchi. I don't like small converters because they get lost all the time. I don't understand why they didn't use the same interface in uh, the remote as in the drone. The drone has a uh, USB-C and uh, the remote has a uh, micro USB. Some might argue that they missed the LCD screen on uh, the remote. And I tend to agree because this is really nice to have that kind of information on the screen. Especially if your connection link is getting a bit flaky. So now you know what I like and what I don't like about the Mavic Air. But would I still buy it with the knowledge that I have today? If you want to travel light, you won't be disappointed about this drone. It packs a tremendous amount of value for the money that uh, you spent. You will have plenty of camera power in uh, your backpack uh, so you can do whatever you want on the road. So is this the best drone that I ever had? Yeah, that depends. I was also pretty happy about my Mavic Pro. That is a pretty uh, decent drone and still is. But uh, the Mavic Air does have some advantages that play in its favor especially the gimbal design and uh, the general build quality that is way more robust than the Mavic Pro. I do have to say, if I had to do drone operations uh, for a living, I would have to upgrade to a drone with a better camera. It's not bad, but uh, if you want to do it professionally, it's not up to scratch. So bottom line, it's a yes for me for buying the Mavic Air, because it's a fun drone and I think you will have a lot of fun with it, especially for recreational flyers like uh, myself. Do you agree or disagree with the points that I've made in this video? Drop them in the comment section below or head over to the Drone Wheeler Facebook group and uh, continue the discussion with me and some of the other subscribers. Just as a reminder, there's plenty of tutorials about the Mavic Air, how to get the best out of it uh, here on the channel. Did you see the video uh, where I showed uh, the settings uh, for taking the perfect photo? If you missed that one, you can access it by pressing here. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.